it time for our players perspective now Antonio Davis veteran of NBA years you, you know that this is part of the deal you were part of teams that saw head coaches removed never won five games into a season is this fair to Mike Brown no I, I've been saying it all along I don't think that it's fair you know I, I never felt like this team had a chance to jail and succeed when you bring in new guys there's obviously uh, going to be some adjustment needs to be made to any kind of offense or anything that you're doing so yes I think this is really unfair one of the things that we've seen through the years is for a coach to have any success at all there has to be a level of buy-in on behalf of the players from what you were able to to, to tell from watching only five games this season. Did Mike Brown have that buy-in from his players? Well, I think he had that buy-in and maybe buy-in too much. You know, as meticulous as he is, I think that he maybe needed to loosen the reins a little bit. But when you have a situation where you're trying to figure out what's going to be the best possible combination or the best possible uh, situation to play these type of guys and these caliber of players in, uh, I, I think you want to get it right. And as you can see, if you don't get it right, you're out of there. Yeah, I, look, we, we keep hearing people say maybe he wasn't big enough for that job. There are a lot of things that go into coaching the Los Angeles Lakers that coaches of many other NBA teams never have to consider. One of the things is the fan base is, is large and they are very vocal. What move, have, what move can they make today, long term, that is going to appease this fan base? Where do you see them going? What's their solution? Well, I think, I think you have to beg Phil, first of all. <laughs> do you, you, you a, go you, back to Phil? You bring a guy in like that to kind of calm everything down. You know, they always call them the Zen master. You, you see different things, and you hear guys that played for Phil that he kept this calmness about everybody through thick and thin. And when you're in that locker room, you're trying to figure out uh, how we're going to get the energy up, how we're going to deal with the media, how we're going to deal with a, a, a losing streak. He figured out a way to get the players fired up and go out there and play. So, yes, I think that would be the guy. Uh, I love Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw was right under Phil. I think they should give him an opportunity, which they should have given him in the first place, to come back in. Everybody loves him. Everybody knows him. I think he would do a great job with this bunch. Take us inside that Laker locker room now. Uh, they're getting ready for their game against Golden State tonight. What are the players saying uh, amongst themselves about this quick hook for Mike Brown? Well, I, I think now they're looking at each other. Like, who's next? You know, obviously, if it doesn't work, if we, if we, does, if we don't win tonight, if we don't have a great uh, home stand here, uh, will I be here? And, and it's hard playing that way. It's hard playing knowing that you could be traded for not playing well. Uh, obviously, you want to go out there and play your best basketball, but it's tough when you don't feel like management has your best interests at heart, which meaning giving you an opportunity to get through a low. One of the things that Ramona Shelburne talked about earlier was for now they're scrapping the coach, but no indication that they're scrapping the Princeton offense. That may come down the road. If you're advising the L.A. Lakers and, and whoever takes over as the new head coach, do you keep this offense do you, do, or do you just try to go back to putting Steve Nash at the point and letting those outstanding thoroughbreds do what they do? You just said it. You've gave them the best advice. I think the most important thing as a player when I played was when I caught the ball, I love catching the ball in certain spots. I had to learn to work within a certain spot on the floor. If I catch the ball in that spot, I'm fine. I think you just need to give guys some parameter, especially great players like that. How much more do we need to do than put Paul Gasol and Steve Nash in a pick and roll or give Kobe the ball on the wing or throw the ball in the hole to Dwight Howard? It doesn't take much. You just have to know when you're going to do it, and everybody else on the floor has to know. One in four, still plenty of season to go here. This is as early as if you're going to make a change, this, I guess, ideally, we talked about this before the show, early is better than later. Yes. With all the season that's left in front of the Los Angeles Lakers, can they still compete for a title with this talent? Well, I think if I'm a player, firing a coach doesn't send the message that we are, I don't know what it sends. You know, if I'm there, I know when we, when I was playing for Lenny Wilkins and I loved, loved him, um, and we start losing games. I think we lost a stretch of maybe 16 games. And I think the only thing that saved him was we rallied towards the end of the season and made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And I think they ended up firing him anyway. But at the end of the day, you don't know which direction you're going when they fired a coach. 
you're just sitting there with your hands thrown up saying, well, okay, well, I just have to get back to just playing basketball. None of that other stuff matters. We're still not playing great defense. We still can do better in defensive transition. There's still a lot of things that we can do better as a team, but now we just don't have direction. How much do the players feel responsible for this, ultimately, that they're the ones out there scoring or not scoring? Yes, well, I'm, I think Kobe said it best. It's like, listen, we are backing him 100%. I've been one of his biggest advocates. I want to make sure that we're successful. He hasn't been successful yet, but I think now we have the pieces to get that done. You feel, re I mean, you go out there when, with that on your shoulders, but not only that, you're wondering if you're next. And that's a hard thing to play with sometimes. So we know the names that are out there, and you mentioned that Phil is the guy, if not Phil, Brian Shaw. Is there a, not, a name that you haven't heard thrown around yet that maybe you've thought of, a guy that they could bring in and sort of manage this crisis situation and, and pick a point on the horizon and take the Lakers where they want to go? You know, I, I've just heard great names. You know, Mike D'Antoni, I, I played with him when I was uh, overseas in Italy. He coached me. I thought he was great. Um, he, he obviously can, you know, a guy like Steve Nash who wants to get up and down the floor and make plays for everybody, he's suitable for that type of point guard. So I think he would be the guy that maybe come in and consult. I, I don't know what the case may be, but I, if, if I'm players, I want them to find somebody that's going to come in, loosen up the reins, allow me to get up and down the floor, allow me to kind of enjoy the game a little bit more. I just think they've been playing so stifled as of late. Moving forward, do you think we'll see – more Showtime Lakers or more Princeton offense Lakers? <laughs> you better see more Showtime because if not, as you know, everybody will be gone because they are used to winning tradition basketball. What does this say about Jim Buss? This was his first fingerprint on the organization to, to replace, uh, to, to move on from Phil with, with Mike Brown. He was the guy. Uh, now this is an $18 million mistake. Yeah, it is, but, you know, you, you learn from those mistakes. He's a great businessman. I'm sure he's he weighed everything that he was supposed to weigh. He interviewed, loved Mike Brown. Uh, I wouldn't second guess it. It just, just happened. It didn't work. And I just don't understand. You don't give this guy a chance. You brought Steve Nash in. You brought Dwight Howard in. You obviously have Paul. You have great pieces. You just don't even give him an opportunity to, to mix everything up and bake a great cake. All right. I know that the pieces weren't all together very often, particularly in the preseason, but collectively, preseason and the regular season, this team is... 1-12, in 12, and I don't think anybody in Los Angeles could have predicted that kind of a start when they were talking about maybe they can compete with Oklahoma City and even the Miami Heat. All right, Antonio Davis on the news that Mike Brown is out after five games to the new season as coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. Antonio, thanks. Thank you for having me.